All right, guys, going to talk about something a little bit different today. Somebody brought up about um, would I advise my son to be meeked out? And the, the funny thing was, we were talking, and I was saying, because he, he already says, you know, he, he would. And the answer to that is yes, of course he would. Because one of the things I was, I mean, I was talking to Peter a couple of days ago as well about the cycle of life. Because the cycle of life was built on traditional values, traditional marriage, traditional this, that, and the other. It is not the way society is today. So you have a society that says that you should chase a woman, spend all your wages on her, because that's what guys should be doing. Um, then get married, have kids, have a house, locked into a minimum of 25 years of financial misery. But if you turn around and say, right, let's skip that, which is what I'm going to be doing with my son, is quite simply, instead of going out chasing women, don't worry about it. We'll focus on construction stuff. We'll focus on, I'll teach you how to be a locksmith. I'll teach you how to um, lay concrete, fit windows, fit doors, renovation stuff. And at the same time, he's learned a lot of skills that he can transfer anywhere in the world. At the end of the day, we can fit a window here, can fit a window anywhere. Um, and at the same time, lots of we're doing, looking at doing aircon now as well, especially here in Spain, air conditioning, there's going to be loads of them failing right now, and it would have been an ideal time to actually be up and running with it, because it's about 32 degrees at the moment. But anyway, the point being is, I transfer my knowledge and my skills, and if he's at school, in a sense, he's at college, university, during the day or whatever, or only comes back at the weekends. The focus will be at the weekends, instead of just lounging around and doing nothing, we'll be out doing construction stuff and bits and pieces to get him up to speed on this stuff so that he has that knowledge. And at the time, he may actually hate a lot of this stuff, but it's when you're 10 years down the line that you suddenly realize why I did it. You know, it's that moment where it's suddenly going, yeah, my dad taught me how to do that, you know, because, like, for example, say you become a chartered accountant, and then for some reason, 10 years down the line, he's not, he can't find work or whatever, he will be able to drop back onto these skills as a emergency backup. But on top of that, it beats the system of chasing the skirt. At the end of the day, you are not going out hunting down and looking for the next day or trying to get yourself locked into a long-term relationship or something. You're focused on the important thing which is learning. When you go to private schools, or the majority of the private schools I've ever been associated with have boys and girls schools, or they're exclusive of one or the other. Why do you think that is? It's exactly what, um, what I'm trying to do, which is actually steer my son away from wasting time, chasing something that will always be there anyway. But it beats the cycle of life. Because what happens is his focus becomes on wealth generation and skill development. So that if, for example, he's at college studying whatever. Now, most people are coming out with debt. Well, he can still install and stuff at night. So he can actually come out ahead of everybody else because his is already paid off. But on top of that, he's in a position where he can be earning money. And on top of that, when he avoids all the pitfalls of getting into a relationship and where people actually lose their focus of what they should have been doing, which is um, instead of focusing on finishing college or university or um, qualifying as a gas engineer or whatever and going, I've met this girl, I really love her and get involved in all this emotional mess when people are still evolving. You know, at the end of the day, they're still going through that transition period into a full-blown adult where you can sort of go, whatever, you know, you, you get tied up in these emotional things. So if you can avoid all that, he'll actually be in a position where he can buy a house and, you know, finish education, get a house, renovate it, do the work himself. Well, I'll probably get lumbered into doing that with him. But at the, the end of the day, we get the house prepped and then he lives in the sitting room rent the rest of the room out or stay, stays with us, get it, get somebody else in there paying the mortgage. And then at a certain point, because for example, say the mortgage is 500 pounds, you get somebody in there renting it out for, for 450, 500, in some cases 600, depends on what renovations we did. Um, but the point being is, the majority of the mortgage, if not all of it, is being paid by somebody else. But that doesn't get him off the hook because I hate debt. So the whole point is for him, I'll be encouraging him to simply be paying off 
with excess money. So, for example, he may be working as a chartered accountant during the day or whatever he's doing, but there's nothing to say he can't install aircon on a Saturday or Sunday or installing electrics in the evenings or doing emergency locksmithing calls or doing other bits on the side. They simply just hammer the mortgage. So he pays it off in five to 10 years. So he's sitting there, by the time he's in his early 30s, house paid off, ability to not only um, do his day job, but also have all these bits on the side where people actually will ask you to do stuff for them and know that you do a good job, etc. So that you've got a constant flow of work. If anything, you may actually get to a point where you're turning stuff down. But ultimately, you're in a very, very good position long term. Now, if you actually decided to meet the right woman and whatever, that's up to him. That's where he needs to make that decision because by that time, he's no longer emotionally um, emotionally thinking. His thoughts are, are more long-term. They're thought through. And at the same time, understanding that uh, things like, for example, you don't let somebody live in your house full time. You don't give them the rights of access in that way. In the UK, they do it as well. There's a lot of the, what I call the benefit girls, which the, the girls and girls and women that are on benefits. They'll have a three-day boyfriend because they're worried about their neighbours or somebody else reporting them for having somebody staying more than three nights a week because if you read the, the paperwork relating to their benefits, uh, they can't have a boyfriend living there full time. It affects their benefits because they've got to take their income into consideration. And there's a lot of couples I know that do that as well. They're not my friends, by the way, but they, they, I know they do it. They, they have separate houses and all sorts because they're fiddling the system left, right and centre, which is why I'm not a fan of the benefit system. But the, the point being is to, to, to think, oh, well, that's a bit unfair because you're protecting your assets. Well, the other side of this is people in the UK are actually not only, um, this isn't protecting their assets, they're exploiting our, our taxes for free housing, etc., which is far, far worse. So somebody actually protecting what they invested in, earned, sweat for and everything else. To hell what anybody else thinks, it's yours. That's it. Nobody's got a right to take that from you and don't give them a right to do it. And the same with the marriage thing. Like I said, with the problem I have with marriage is there is nobody I have ever met uh, beyond um, several people in the Philippines that the marriage was a... Very few of them... Yeah, very few people I've met in life would actually see it as a cornerstone. They see it as a something they should do for the big the white dress for this for that it's not about the actual foundations of of the family it's not about the little basket where they transfer a wealth where the the woman's responsible for the wealth and looking after the family it's not about commitment for life in death do us part etc etc it's about the wedding dress it's about my big day so contractually it's just a contract where there is no benefit to a man. And if you had the same contract in a business opportunity, would you sign it? The answer to that is no. And if the role was reversed, would a lot of women sign it? I'd hazard a guess, no. 